Did you get a copy of Starry Night with your telescope? Have no idea how to use it? Well, that's okay. In this video, I'll show you how to get started really quick. Many telescopes today come with software to help you find objects in the night sky. One of the most popular is called Starry Night. It is included in telescope packages from Orion and Celestron, uh, to name a couple. They don't actually send you the software. They usually give you a little card. On that card, it gives you a, a code and a URL to go to. Since mine was an Orion telescope, it's having me go to starrynight.com slash Orion. Once here, I enter the code off of my card, select I'm not a robot, and then access my download. It may ask you to click on a bunch of car pictures or truck pictures or whatever to verify that you're not a robot, and then it's going to ask you for an email address. This email address is where they're going to send your registration information, which you're going to have to have in order to install and use the software. So. Once the download is complete, which will take a couple of minutes because it's a fairly large file, you will start the installation. In my case, since my telescope is not connected and will never be connected to this computer, I'm going to deselect this ASCOM platform telescope control. If you plan on uh, connecting your computer to your telescope, if that's possible, then you might want to leave that selected. So I'm going to do next. And this will take a couple of minutes. Once the installation is complete, it will normally leave an icon on your desktop, or you can launch it, and it will ask you for the registration information that they sent you in the email. Now this top blank, uh, I don't believe you have to put anything in. That's just a, an email address if you want to uh, have your email address registered in there. But you're going to have to put in the username and the key code, whoop, there we go. So now that it's registered and ready to go, we'll load up. And here we go. Now, the next thing is it tries to find where you are given uh, what it sees on the internet. Generally, this is very close. In my case, it found the town just fine. If yours did not find where you were, you can choose a location here uh, from a list, a map, or you can enter the longitude and latitude, which is what I usually do if it doesn't come up close for me. The way to find that is if you go to gps-coordinates.net and then click on Converter. Put in your address in this top blank. Click on Get GPS Coordinates. It will come up with a latitude and longitude in both decimal and degrees, minutes, and seconds. Now, in this particular one, it wants degrees, minutes, and seconds. So you would simply copy this information and paste it in here uh, if this wasn't close enough for you. In my case, it is, so I'm going to save that as my home location. And from there, you can uh, look at all of the, the information here on the right that comes up by default. You can see the sun is up where I am. You can click 
left and right. Click and drag to move the mouse up, down, and around. So the first thing we want to do is we need to adjust the time. And the reason we need to do that is because obviously we don't want to be seeing most of the time anyway, the sun up. So we're planning to be viewing at night. So in this case, I'm going to go uh, use the arrow keys once I click in a field to set the time up and down. Okay. So now we're, we're in the dark. You can do the same for the day and the year and the month. Um, but mainly I just wanted to get to the dark. So now that you've set the date and time and you can move around, you really can't see a whole lot. Uh, there's a little something there, but, but it's hard to, to figure out where you are on this screen. So one of the first things I do is I come over here and you can click on options right here, or you can click options right here. Either one gets you to this option pane. Now, my favorite parts of this are to make it easier for me to navigate around and, and see what I'm doing. And for that, I like to go to the constellations section here, turn on my stick figures and turn on labels. Now this is fine and dandy, but one of the things you can't really do here very easily is uh, change the brightness of these lines. And I like for them to be a little dimmer. So you can go to options and go to constellations, constellation options, and you get a little different view over here. I like these lines to be as thin as possible and go, okay, that makes them a little dimmer and a little easier to, to see around. The next thing I like to do is uh, to go in, you can go into your options here, go to deep space, deep sky, and you can see several options for uh, your deep sky objects. Um, typically images is good. Uh, I like to turn on labels so I can see what's going on. Then you can click there. So now you can start to see some labels here. All right. So let's, this is at 5.54 p.m. So let's say you want to go forward. Now the time is moving forward. You can see that the seconds are going, but it's kind of slow. So if we go here, we can drop this down and go to like 300. And now stuff starts moving really good. And once we get to, to where we want to be, we can click the stop time. Now in here, we start to see some objects uh, that are fairly big and bright. You can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to scroll in and out. Now, one thing I don't like is that is very, very sluggish. So I like to go up to preferences, go to, let's see, responsiveness. And there is a zoom step here. And I usually like to set that at about 40 to start with. You can close that. Now when you move the mouse in and out, it tends to, to move pretty good. Now, some other things you can do uh, is you can, of course, this is like pause or stop. You can move backwards and forward, and you can do that in a variety of different speeds. So that will really help you move around and get the sky to the point where you want it. Now, over here, you can also search for objects. For example, go back to here. I can go find the Orion Nebula. Down here is an Orion Nebula. If I double click on that, it takes me to where that is. Okay, That helps you find an object in the sky that you may not know where it is. Now the Orion Nebula is kind of kind of easy. So you could put anything up here you, you could think of. Um, let's see if it sees that. There's the Swan Nebula. And it told me that it rises at seven something. Not currently visible from your location. Do you want to reset the time to a time where it can be seen? Sure. Let's go there. And 
There we go. Now we're probably not going to be viewing the Swan Nebula because right there's the sun. But that gives you an idea that you can type in pretty much anything you've heard or, or seen and it will show you where it is. So now that we've seen a few things and we've labeled a few things, you know, like here's M6, uh, notice the, the labels here are gone. So what happens if we go to Options and we go to Deep Sky, Show Images, Labels. Now you can change the label font if you want to make them larger. You can pick different types of objects that you want to see, and you can see the catalogs they're in. Now, in all fairness, if you're starting out with this software on a, on a telescope, the ones you're really going to be interested in are going to be these first few, the Messier, the NGC, the Caldwell, Principal Galaxies, and, and maybe this one. These, you're really not going to be using those to start off with. These are the ones that, that you want to get to. Now, next, we're going to scroll up here. And these little guys here allow you to turn on and off sections of the screen. So you could have both of them on. And you got a little section in here where you could see. You can, of course, delete this. And here's all kinds of, of stuff. What's in today's sky? Um, so it'll tell you what's going on today really quickly. You can also come over here to like the sky calendar and it will tell you days, what's going on that particular day to give you an idea of, of what you want to view if you really don't know. You can also, of course, turn all those off like I had before to give you the maximum amount of, of uh, room to scroll around and, and look at, at targets. For example, right here is a nice cluster of stuff to look at. This is the uh, heart nebula and the baby or child nebula here. Both of those are really nice things to look at. So hopefully this gave you a, a quick start guide that will get you on your way to using this program. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you like the video, please click the like. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to get more information like this. And click on the bell if you want to be notified when there are new videos up and going. Clear skies.